One of the key components to finding snow is radar imagery. And I'm here at 10,000 feet, right between the Wasatch Mountains and the Rocky Mountains with one of the National Weather Service's WSR 88D radars. There are over 130 weather radars spread around the country, and the one behind me requires a 15-mile snowmobile ride just to access in the winter. The radar sends out a 360-degree pulse of energy. If that energy hits anything, I mean bugs, rain, snow, dust, some of that gets returned to the radar. And when that energy is returned, sophisticated computer technology like this creates a map that shows meteorologists where the precipitation, hopefully snow, is falling right now. Radar works very well when the ground is flat. The lowest scan, just 0.5 degrees above the ground, can easily detect snow. In mountainous terrain, radar isn't so hot. Oddly enough, scientists haven't been able to figure out how to get radar to pass through solid rock. Hopefully they keep working on that. There are some other limitations to the radar. For instance, it can detect liquid water like rain pretty well, but snowflakes are actually a big challenge. This is because the radar works well when it hits something solid. Rain is a great target and easily reflects the radar beam back to the station. Snowflakes are made up mostly of air, so they are not as efficient at reflecting the radar beam's energy. Also, it can detect a lot of precipitation within 100 miles, but beyond that, it's not as effective. We combat this issue by placing radars close to each other so that their field of view overlaps. Radar is an awesome tool that meteorologists use to find snow, but it's not perfect. And the biggest mountains where we want to ski and snowboard also present the most challenges to the radar. So enjoy peeking at radar maps from time to time, but if you're looking for the deepest snow, radar might not provide all the information you need. For OnTheSnow.com, I'm meteorologist Joel Grass.